This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to talk about how to solve absolute value inequalities. Uh, the technique I'm going to use for this video is a graphing calculator, so I'm, I'm going to not use algebra, and I have another video on that already on MathGuy. Okay, so some people are just visual people. Some people like to use technology, and this is kind of a convenient way to see these things visually. All right, let's start with our, our problem. All right, we can see that I have an absolute value here, and I have an inequality, hence the absolute value inequality. So um, it's fairly simple how to solve this, um, as long as you understand the visual things that I'm about to say. All right, well, with the graphing calculator, what I'm going to do is I am going to graph both sides of this inequality separately. I'm going to look at them as two separate functions. So I'm going to call this first f1, our first function, and I'm going to call this our second function, f2. And what I'm going to do is plot each one of those separately on a graphing calculator. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the graphing calculator, and uh, I'm going to use a TI Inspire calculator, and you should know that there's several other types of calculators available. There are Hewlett-Packard and Casio. They all make great calculators and uh, I don't endorse any one over the other. I just have a lot of experience recently using the TI Inspire, and uh, that's what I'm going to show. But all calculators have very similar functionality. Where you find things in menus may be a little bit different from one calculator to the next, but they all do this strategy that I'm about to show you. All right, let me flip over to the calculator. All right, so Here's what the screen looks like for a TI Inspire. I have the coordinate plane graphed up. Uh, so I just got a new document. Okay, so I went under a new document and I just got a graphing program up here. All right, so what I'm going to do is hit tab. If you hit tab, it opens up the dialog box. I'm going to put 2, and I'm going to put the absolute value, x plus 1. And we said on the outside we had a minus 7. Okay, so this is our first function. And you can see that all absolute value uh, functions do look like Vs. And that's what it looks like. I'm going to move this thing over a little bit. Okay, so that's the equation for our first function. Let's graph the other one. Okay, hit tab again. That's how I use this. And my second function is really simple. It's just y equals 3. So it's a horizontal line right there. All right, now what we have to do is figure out where does the red line, that's the right side of our inequality, meet the blue or left side of our inequality. So I'm interested in those points of intersection right there. There's one point right there and another point right there. Now the way I use it on this calculator is I hit Menu, Analyze Graph, Intersection. It's going to ask me, what's the lower bound? So when I want to locate this point, I go left of the point, it's my lower bound, I move the cursor to the right for the upper bound, and it gives me this value. Okay, so it tells me the location of that point is negative 6, 3. All right, I'm going to find the next point right there. Same trick, hit menu, analyze graph, intersection. Again, it's saying what's the lower bound. So for this point, I say the lower bound is somewhere to the left. The upper bound is somewhere to the right of that point, and it gives me the location of that intersection. Okay, so I've got these two, and so I'm going to remember those values. So keep in mind that our original problem doesn't have any y's in it. We're trying to figure out what values of x makes this equation true. So I'm only interested in the x values, no other value. I don't care about the y values or anything. So since the solution is x is what I'm seeking, I'm going to focus on those x values. So I'm going to go back to the graph. Okay, so this graph says my x values are negative 6 and 4. Again, I don't care about the y value of 3. And I know that line is y equals 3. But remember, we're solving for x. So I only care about the negative 6. And then and the four. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to put those two points, which are called critical values. I'm going to put them on a number line, negative six and four. 
Okay, so now I'm going to make a number line. So I'm going to put crudely using this tablet. It's hard to draw straight lines, but that's pretty decent. So the two values, negative 6 and 4. Okay, since the original problem doesn't have an equal sign, I'm going to use open circles. In other words, I know for a fact that negative 6 and 4 are not solutions to this problem. What I do want to do is I want to figure out, should I shade in the middle? Should I shade in the left? Should I shade in the right? In other words, which s intervals for x are the solution to this problem? Now, there's a way to do this algebraically, but again, I'm going to use the graphing calculator. So let's go back to the picture. So the original problem had a less than sign. So it was saying, when is this function, the left side of our problem, less than this function? Okay, what that means is, where on this picture, where in this picture, is this V-shape below the line? Okay, that's what less than means. It means below. So, less than means below, right? So, I am going to think, where is the V below the line? So, in other words, if I were to say over here, in this section, left of negative 6, is the V below the line? I'd say, no, the V is definitely above the line in this section. Okay, so these can't be answers over here. Uh, let's see, the V is definitely below the line here. So it looks like all the values between negative 6 and 4, the V is below the line. Over here, the V is again, the blue part, the blue part of this V-shaped curve is above the red line. And that's not what I want. I want the section where the V is below the line. Okay, so it looks like between negative 6 and 4, the V is below the red line. Therefore, those are the answers. The answers are when the x is between negative 6 and 4. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my number line. Since the v was below the curve here, right, that's what I wanted to figure out where the v is below the line, I am now going to say that the answer has to be over here. The answer has to be between negative 6 and 4. So I got that just by looking at the graph. It was just a visual representation. So now I know the answer has got to be, the x has to be smaller than 4, but greater than negative 6. And there you have it. So if I put it in set notation and say the answer is x, such that negative 6 is less than x, which is less than 4. Now many people just write this on a test. Or they just say all the numbers greater than negative 6 and all the numbers that are less than 4. And there you have it. So that's how you use a graphing calculator to solve absolute value inequalities. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos, our interactive quizzes, and our text-based lessons. Take care.